All right, let's start. So um, data visualization with Plotly on Python. First thing is the whole conversation was about core play plots or maps, but what are those? I mean, why would you come all the way out here on your, you know, night just to think about that? So core path maps basically allow you to look at visual metrics across some type of geography um, situation. So to Scott's point on the income, if you wanted to see how many people through Indianapolis or through Indiana have different varying levels of income, you could use something like Plotly to plot that to get a better visualization. One of the reasons why that's so important is because most of us do not do well with just looking at data in table form, but if you have it in some type of visual form, the audience is more able to understand it and ha actually have some type of insight that they can go from it. So, first thing is name your enemy. So, I must admit, you know, my background, I was a guy with a spreadsheet saying, hey, hey, business executive, this is what you need to do. Can't you see it in the numbers? And they look at me like, no. Can you do me a box plot? Can you do me a scatter plot? Can you do, can you do some type of visual to kind of um, explain to me what's going on? So I was definitely one of those people that was trying to push for just the data and not understanding that my audience needed some type of visual medium to better understand what I was trying to convey to them. So, obviously, got from hangover. Some of us can make that math. They can do it all immaculately in your head. You can understand what you're looking at, but that's not me. That's not most people. So, understanding your audience and being able to have that type of um, conveyed system is definitely helpful. So, what we're going to talk about tonight is one of the reasons why I was. Ooh, this is really small. Zero. Zero. Okay, all right, <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, so one of the things we're gonna look at is trying to find patterns in the um, data that we're looking at. Technical difficulties, all right. So I'm um, trying to find patterns in the data that we're looking at, but insight is our main goal that we're trying to achieve. So from there, why now? One of the things that I've um, been able to identify is based off of a 2017 study, there are over four million videos watched every minute on YouTube. The data that we're producing through our social media apps, the data that we're producing through all of these applications that we're now engaged on minute by minute, day by day, hour by hour, are producing large amounts of data. They're just asking for people, explain it to me. How can I use it for marketing? How can I use it for my business um, situations and things of that nature? So if you're able to get that data and then if you're able to explain it, then you can add tremendous value to most companies. So this was an interesting little, um, little thing that I found. Obviously the words are mixed up, but if you read it, it makes sense. So you just say, it doesn't matter in what order the letters in word are. The only important thing is that the first and last letter be at the right place. So obviously, your mind is able to understand it, but looking at it, it's not, um, it's not comprehensible. So I thought that was an interesting way to visualize how data, usually looking at it, you can't make sense, but naturally you finally understand it. Um, so some of the ways that you can look at data are swarm pops. Some of the other ones are um, heat maps. One reason why I like this one so much, this one is an example of how, how the volume of um, airline traffic was throughout a, you know, 1952, or basically 1950 to 1959. And basically, if I had it in a data, in a table of form, it'd be hard to tell that July and August were my highest months versus November, January, and February being my lowest months. But again, let's finally get back to why we came here to talk about Orpeth maps. So, I'm gonna do the hard thing, and I am going to try to create a table, and we're gonna try to actually code this with my examples. Obviously, you can see all of there. So basically, what I'm doing right now is I'm importing the Plotly library. So that's the way that I'm going to create the interactive visualizations. I'm also importing pandas for the data manipulation. 
So the second piece is because Plotly um, has an interaction with a little bit of JavaScript, I'm having to connect that so that in my notebook, my Jupyter notebook that I'm using right now, is able to access that and render the plots within the table. The next piece is importing the data. So with importing the data, I basically use um, pandas to read in the CSV file. So I have this data set, US agricultural exports, in the local directory, and then I basically do a df.head to explain the data. So again, looking at this, this basically means nothing to most people. It's hard to gain any type of insight from that. So the next thing I need to do is I need to start using the chloropleth piece, and I need to create a data object. So basically what this data object does is, one, I want to identify what type of plot I want to make, and here I'm doing a chloropleth. Second, I want to identify what type of color scale, and that just gives me a visual reference, a better visual reference, to the locations. Basically, DF um, brackets code allows me to target that series location mode with the Plotly um, library. You're able to use US states as well as you can go down to the county level. You can go as deep as you want to, as well as if you wanted to go globally, you can actually put um, different global entities in there as well. So once you've created the data object, the next step is to create the layout object. And basically what that is, is that's setting up your um, graph. So again, we're gonna work on domestic. So we're gonna do a graph of the United States. And then lastly, we're gonna do a plot. And as you can see, we are able to get our plot. And what this is basically, at a quick glance, based off of what we're looking at above, you really can't tell what that's trying to, what that information is trying to convey to you. However, it's easy to see, based off of this scale showing millions in USD, that California has, domestically, has one of the highest exports, then it goes to Illinois, and then it goes down from there. So, Northeast, very little in their exports, agriculture for the um, year 2011 by states. So again, one of the main benefits and one of the key things I was trying to get out of this discussion is, how do you make data more available to the average user? How do you make them more aware of what you're trying to convey and um, <laughs> what you're trying to convey and how do you get them more involved in the game? So, going. Ah. So going back, what's an example of where someone else has actually used this in the wild? with MRI data. So say a doctor is wanting to um, look at a patient's um, scans, being able to visually slice it up piece by piece and get a good um, representation of what it's looking like to identify some type of um, disease or what have you, that's one of the ways that you can use this application. Some of the um, lessons I learned and helpful tips. So obviously, learn various ways to communicate your information Analysis always starts with good questions. Um, as a beginner, I mean, I started, I just started Python about a year ago, not knowing anything. Um, building virtual environments saves you a lot of headache, a lot of headache. Um, so I guess everybody, <laughs> other people, <laughs> other people shaking their heads, yeah. So, um, and then, you know, playing around with Jupyter Notebooks. Um, all this was created in Jupyter Notebooks. It allows you to share your code. It allows you to put um, markup in your um, project so people can read throughout it and understand what you're trying to convey. Um, and then just play with Plotly, see what you can find. So um, with all that, I wanna say thank you to everyone that came out. I wanna say thank you to Calvin, Colleen, um, Dana, and the rest of the crew for giving me this opportunity. And if you have questions, feel free to ask. And that's it.